Hi everyone, in this video we're going to reduce the aerodynamic drag of a truck using a technique we call design advice, which is based on the adjoint technique. So after a normal CFD simulation to capture the aerodynamics of your truck, we'll run a second simulation based on the adjoint, which will serve as a sensitivity map, which will tell you on the surface where to move it outward or inward to actually reduce the drag. Let's have a look. So this truck is actually quite a useful model. It's the Vecto model, which is part of the European regulation to help you quantify the aerodynamic drag reduction potential of your devices, which you can apply to this truck or other trucks. So if you look at this truck, just a quick overview. If you want to know how we set up this simulation and want to read the results, actually we have a separate video on this, so check the, the pop-up link in this video now. In this video, we're going to focus on the elements that we're going to try and reduce using the design advice. So this one has flow separation around the mirrors. Um, you have a lot of flow separation here uh, below the front. Uh, let's call it a splitter. It's not really a splitter, but be, uh, below that area. The wheels are causing quite a lot of drag, um, obviously, where the air hits the front of the trailer, even though there's quite a good alignment between the tractor and the trailer. And then, of course, the rear of the truck. So we're going to see how the design device, which is this color map, will help us to actually mitigate some of those problems. So the way it works is that red means you have to move the surface slightly outward along the normal. Uh, so the normal is pointing outwards. Uh, so this red part would mean put it outward like this. And blue means uh, push it inwards. So along the normal, push it inwards. So this blue part would have to need push it along this direction across the normal. So if we look at the front of the truck, uh, what is very obvious is that this blue here uh, extends all the way around the front face of the truck and basically what this means is that the tractor is a boxy shape so that means the air hits the front then needs to go to the side and then traverse again along the uh, wind direction and that of course is not ideal for aerodynamics you would want to have like a smooth curve here just like you have on a Tesla Semi for example. So the software is suggesting us to do exactly that. So if you look at this one, blue means inward and red means outward. So if you look at an edge like this, that would mean if you push this outward like this, then inward here and then extend it here, you actually create a much larger radius um, around this part of the truck. So that's basically what it's telling us to do. You don't have to do both at the same time. You can just push the blue in and actually keep the front and the side face just to get this larger radius here. Then if you look at other components, you'll see that the mirrors are causing a lot of drag. And that is again because of the same reason. The air will hit the front side of the mirror and then it splashes out um, as it tries to curve around it. So what Design Advice is telling us, um, this part of the mirror, um, please extend it forward so you get more like uh, a tangential um, airflow here exiting from the mirror instead of this this one, so the mirror is quite perpendicular to the airflow now, or to the local airflow, it suggests to actually make it even more parallel to the local airflow um, across the mirror there. Then we have uh, small features like this. This is interesting. This is always nice to see that um, if you have a small jump in your geometry, like there's an angle between these two surfaces, so aerodynamically you want this to be much smoother. So what the design advice is telling us, this edge here is all red, so bring it up to actually uh, smoothen out this edge that you have there. Then if we look at the underfloor here, we saw that there's quite a lot of flow separation. Again, the air hits the front, needs to curve around this sharp edge, which is way too sharp, so there's flow separation. It dives down too deep, recirculates and then reattaches. So to avoid this, the design advice is telling us, well, the edge itself is blue, so push it inward. Um, so that would give it uh, like a larger radius in this face. Push this surface, the front surface outward a little, so actually go bulge out like this and then curve in and then bulge down a bit and then reattach again because the bottom is also red. So again, basically it's telling us make a much larger radius here to guide the air from the front all the way to the bottom of the truck. Then here in the middle, um, it's telling us to push this one downward a little. Probably that's because you would have less air hitting this differential or this part later on uh, and feed some more air to these areas, which is blue. So push this up uh, so to feed more air to that side. Um, over here, that's interesting. Um, you'll see that the air 
coming off the top of the wheel is splashing out dramatically uh, so it's being pushed out by the wheel so design advice is saying uh, you could theoretically push this out a little more to give it more like a ramp to land softly but at the bottom of the wheel you'll see that the air actually hits this edge of the um, I don't know if it's fuel tank but this geometry so at the bottom this one is sticking out too much so the design advice is telling us please uh, push this inward a little um, to solve that. If you look at the front face of the trailer which already has like this chamfer which is good but still this is a sharp edge so the air hitting this side here so even though the alignment is quite good we still have a slight bit of uh, flow separation here of the air hitting this face and then tumbling across the top so design advice is telling us this is a blue edge so push this down just a little if that doesn't work you can also extend the, the the geometry just behind it give it a small bump here so it would land softly uh, instead of hitting this and then separating and tum tumbling like this same for this so we saw that there's a chamfer so it's a 45 degree angle here um, actually, um, it's it's a hundred. Um, it's more than a hundred, let's say. But like this angle here, um, this angle is forty-five degrees between them. So that edge could be smoothened out to reduce um, the pressure gradient across this edge. Then other interesting things, uh, for example, um, over here you'll see that this mud flap is of course a front face, so it wants you to change this shape. This one is very similar, so if you look at the rear, if I reset my view here for a second, just to see where I can end up, yeah, like this. So this is also quite obvious, this is some geometry here which is acting like a scoop, uh, and so this is causing drag. So what design advice is telling us, well, this face here, push it inward so it wouldn't scoop up as much air. The same with this boxy shape. So again, this air is hitting the front here of the shape and wants to curve around. So again, the edge itself is marked as blue, which means give it a larger radius so you don't get as much uh, pressure gradient around that uh, area. And at the rear, it's very similar. You want to reduce the drag coming off this box. So it wants you to push in this edge uh, so that you reduce the, um, the width of this box just when the air wants to leave this box. And a very similar story happens with the entire trailer itself. So if you look at this one, there's two ways to actually reduce the size of this wick. So basically what happens, the air travels and is traveling parallel to the stop surface and then tumbles down into the wake. So to reduce the size of the wake, you actually want to inject the air in a more downward uh, manner here. So there's two ways of doing that. One way is to actually um, raise the surface ahead of the edge, which is the red part. You can raise it ahead of the edge and then curve downward again. So there's like this bump, I'm exaggerating now, this bump. So by the end of this bump, the air is already shooting downward into the wake. And of course, you can also lower the edge itself, uh, which would curve like this uh, for the top surface and then shoot some air into the wake. You can also do both, of course, uh, and get the combined effect. Uh, depends on what your other constraints are. Very often these are constraints in terms of height and width, so probably you'll stick to the device to just push inward the blue one, but that might compromise your cargo loading space uh, or loading area and so on. So you always have to combine this with other constraints. So that's in a nutshell a quick review of the design advice map. So that was it for this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe for more videos, please do so. And if you have any comments, just drop them below. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.